Democrats are very nervous, I will tell you. They're very, they do nothing for you, and that was supposed to be automatic. Black lives have never, ever, ever mattered to the Democrat Party. Black votes always have. They create this narrative every four years that the Republicans are racist. They try to scare us. Are we such punks that we are so scared to try something different? Make America great again is for us, too. They seem obsessed with race. It's every single day they're trying to sell to us our own oppression. Of the Democratic Party, if we go on for far too long, and we say enough is enough. We're not voting for people who are not serving our communities and serving our best interests. The only people that are white that we have allowed around us are white liberals. And the only reason why black men are out here storming on flags and burning them is because the Democrats never taught them how to love that fucking flag. They just put a black person in the White House for eight years. They didn't do anything for us. The truth is that this is all by Democrat design. Like Chicago, like Baltimore, and like Detroit, they have been run by Democrats for decades. We have been made to believe that the conditions in our cities are normal. We're supposed to turn a blind eye to the corruption, to the crimes, the gangs, and instead focus on what our media deems of more importance. We are instead told that we should be focusing on white people. We're supposed to be reactive and angry and fearful about white supremacy when in fact, it is liberal supremacy that is harming our communities. We have been disrespected by the Democrats. We have empowered their party, lined the pocket of their politicians, and we have gotten positively nothing in return for our blind allegiance and faithfulness. We handed them power, and in return, they further diminished our sense of pride that without stable households, our children would pursue that paternity elsewhere. They knew that our children would run to the streets. They knew that our youth would grow up and begin to mirror themselves after rappers and basketball players rather than men of high intellect and values and more attainable goals. What they didn't know, what they could have never predicted, was that we might wake up to it one day. The racist, leftist media will attack you. No more telling us that we cannot do something because of the color of our skin. No more fear politics. No more attempts to scare us into voting for you. No more lies. No more half-truths. They are scared of no longer being able to control us. They are scared that we are actually waking up to everything that they have done to us. I just have to say that I object strenuously to your use of the word hilarious. Laughing at it is a real problem because these are real families that are impacted by this violence. Ms. Owens, obviously this is a gang up on you. I find it unfair. Ms. Owens, you can have four minutes and 34 seconds. I will say it again. You know that white supremacy and white nationalism is nowhere near, ranks nowhere near the top of the issues that are facing black America. And the reason that you are bringing them up in this room is because it is attempt to make the election all about race as the Democrat. Not in my case, Ms. Owens. Please, no, please my, do not characterize my motive. Mr. Chairman, it's my time. Yeah, you, it's my time. You've got your time, Mr. Madison. Every you three more seconds. Minute. Every four years you bring up race and you knew exactly what I meant when I said hilarious and you just tried to do live what the media does all the time to Republicans, to our president and to conservatives, which you tried to manipulate what I said to fit your narrative, okay? I was not referring to the subject matter that is hilarious. I said it's hilarious that we are sitting in this room today and I've got two doctors and a missus and nobody can give us real numbers that we can respond to so we can assess how big of a threat this is because you know that it is not as big of a threat as you are trying to make it out to be so you can manipulate and the audacity of you to bring up the Christ Church shooting manifesto and make it seem as if I laughed at people that were slaughtered by a homicidal maniac, maniac is in my opinion absolutely despicable and I think that we should be above that to try to assign reality or any meaning to a homicide a homicidal maniac writing a manifesto you are, you would rather assign meaning to a homicidal maniac than to actually address that I said to the things that I said today that are actually harming black America. Number one, father absence. Number two, the education system and the illiteracy rate. Illegal immigration ranks high, abortion ranks high, white supremacy and white nationalism, if I had to make a list again of 100 things, would not be on it. This hearing, in my opinion, is a farce. And it is ironic that you're sitting here and you're having three Caucasian people testify and tell you what their expertise are. Do I know what my expertise are? black in America. I've been black in America my whole life, all 30 years, and I can tell you that you guys have done the exact same thing every four years ahead of an election cycle, and it needs to stop. 
So I'm going to play for you the first 30 seconds of a statement she made about Adolf Hitler. I agree. I, I actually don't have any problems at all uh, with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, it, the definition gets poisoned um, by uh, leaders that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in, at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist, but if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be German. Yes, um, I think it's pretty apparent that uh, Mr. Liu believes that black people are stupid and will not uh, pursue the full clip in its entirety. He purposely presented an extract, an extracted the clip. The witness will suspend for a moment. It's not proper to refer disparagingly to a member of the committee. Uh, the witness will not do that again. The witness may continue. Sure, even though I was called despicable. Um, the witness may not refer to a member of the committee as stupid. I didn't refer to him as stupid. That's not what I said. That's not what I said at all. You, you didn't listen to what I said. May I continue? Please. As I said, he is assuming that black people will not go pursue the full two-hour clip. And he purposefully extracted, he cut off, and you didn't hear the question that was asked of me. He's trying to present as if I was launching a defense of Hitler in Germany, when in fact, the question that was asked of me was pertaining to whether or not I believed that Hitler was a, whether or not I believed in nationalism, and that nationalism was bad. And what I responded to was that I do not believe that we should be characterizing Hitler as a nationalist, as a homicidal, psychopathic maniac that killed his own people. A nationalist would not kill their own people. That is exactly what I was referring to in the clip, and he purposely wanted to give you a cut-up similar to what they do to Donald Trump to create a different narrative. That was unbelievably dishonest, and he did not allow me to respond to it, which is worrisome and should tell you a lot about where people are today in terms of trying to drum up narratives. By the way, I would like to also add that I work for Prager University, which is run by an Orthodox Jew, and a single Democrat showed up to the embassy opening in Jerusalem. I sat on a plane for 18 hours to make sure that I was there. I'm deeply offended by the insinuation of, of revealing that clip without the question that was asked of me.